This looks like a normal cricket match in India. But everything about it is fake. The players, the umpires, the pitch, and even the crowd noise. A gang set up fake Indian Premier League matches to dupe foreign betters. It reached the quarter-final stage before it was busted by local police. This bizarre story is only the latest example of misinformation making headlines in India. A study done at the University of Alberta in Canada claims India was the biggest source of COVID-19 misinformation in the world, accounting for roughly one in six cases worldwide. And a Microsoft survey adds that nearly two-thirds of Indians have encountered fake news, which is more than the world average. So why has India, the biggest democracy in the world, turned into a hub for so-called fake news? One main reason mentioned by many experts is the lack of digital literacy in the country. While India had about 150 million internet users a decade ago, it has seen an increase to more than 800 million now, thanks to low-priced mobile phones and cheap internet data plans. But despite this huge growth in internet penetration, studies show people's skills to critically evaluate information they find online haven't caught up yet. A lot of people are now coming online, probably in the, just the last five years, you know, hundreds of millions of people have come online. Uh, and so that's the key here. So, you know, though misinformation has been a thing for a long, long time, online misinformation aided by digital platforms, which enables the sort of viral spread, the massive spread, I think that's a problem. During the coronavirus pandemic, credible news was often drowned out by unverified information online. Misinformation related to false cures and conspiracy theories caused panic, anxiety and fear as the virus spread. For example, at the beginning of the pandemic, a Hindu group hosted a cow urine drinking party in India. They believed this would help prevent a COVID-19 infection, as many Hindus consider the cow sacred. Leading politicians of the ruling party had also advocated the use of cow urine as medicine. Others rubbed cow dung on their bodies because they believed they could heal a COVID-19 infection through this. But there is no scientific grounding for such treatment. In fact, doctors warned that it could lead to other diseases such as black fungus infection. So a lack of digital literacy is one reason. Fake news proliferates in India. But to really understand why the country is turned into such a hub for misinformation, we need to understand two key things, politics and religion. In fact, politics and religion are two areas that contribute to nearly half of the fake news generated in India, according to a study by the Asian Journal for Public Opinion Report. Let's start with politics. Prime Minister Narendra Modi represents the Hindu Nationalist Party, the BJP in India. In 2014, he came to power with the mantra of Sabka Saad, Sabka Vikas, or we are with everyone for everyone's prosperity, referring to a multicultural and multi-religious Indian society. But eight years later, the country is witnessing a sharp religious divide and a rise in nationalism. According to a research done by the BBC, these factors have contributed to the rise of so-called fake news in India. It's affecting most of the uh, people and even the ordinary life. So it's not just the political misinformation that we have been seeing regularly, but it's also a kind of a social problem. It's also affecting businesses. It's also affecting uh, societies. Many BJP leaders, including cabinet ministers, were also found spreading misinformation. In this tweet, the Minister of Commerce in the Modi cabinet claimed Indian streets have been lit with LED lights. However, a reverse image search shows the image is actually from a street in Russia. There are many other examples where prominent figures of the ruling party have shared misinformation. Experts worry the country is especially fertile ground for misinformation. This is alarming because the current uh, uh, ruling party is not doing enough 
uh, to stop the spread of misinformation. In fact, the party has built a huge social media production hub known as the BJP IT Cell, a nationwide network of social media managers and influencers. Thousands of people work here, spreading online messages and making them viral. The group has often been accused of also spreading misinformation. If you look at most of the fact checkers in India, and if you look at the kind of uh, misinformation they are bursting every day, if you just look at the amounts of misinformation that is coming from different political parties that they have been um, uh, debunking every day, you can see this a lot of misinformation are coming from the supporters of the current ruling party. The BJP denies this accusation. We do not indulge in fake news. Let me be very candid about it. We do not, the party does not indulge in fake news. If something has been attributed to the party, one needs to go to the root of it. But actually, BJP leaders are often accused of spreading fake news according to Indian media. Recently, a case was registered against India's former information and broadcasting minister for allegedly spreading misinformation. Interestingly, when it comes to misinformation in India, a lot of examples revolve around Modi himself. Here, supposedly, the New York Times claims the Indian Prime Minister is the last hope for the world. But a simple fact check reveals that the font used here is different from the New York Times style sheet. Or take this popular one. It says the UNESCO has declared Modi as the best Prime Minister in the world. But this is not true. The UNESCO does not have any such ranking, and later Facebook also marked it as false information. But the post was still shared thousands of times. So we've talked about the role digital literacy and politics play in the proliferation of misinformation in India. But what about religion? Misinformation has been weaponized by uh, the most of the uh, vested interest, you know, and if you look at the current political situations, uh, uh, w what happens in terms of uh, uh, misinformation, it is unfortunately targeted against the minorities. So if you happen to be minority, then you are more likely to be affected by the by misinformation. A London School of Economics study suggests anti-Muslim disinformation campaigns in India surged during the corona pandemic. Muslims were accused of spreading COVID-19 in India when the pandemic started in 2020. It became such a widespread phenomenon that the Indian media even coined a term for it, Corona Jihad. Here's an example. In this video, Muslims are being accused of poisoning rice in India. But if you watch the video, you'll notice people speaking Spanish. Zooming in on the name of the rice brand, you can clearly read Caserita. A Google search leads us to a popular rice brand in the Latin American country of Peru. The real story was that in Peru, some people were adding food color and oil to make the rice look better. But it had nothing to do with Muslims or India. Things like that, that are happening these days on uh, uh, co Corona Jihad, for instance, like, right, like, so this in instance of uh, Muslims actually trying to spread uh, uh, COVID uh, deliberately that uh, has led to, uh, you know, Muslim uh, commerce, like people, uh, you know, being a bit wary of buying from Muslim vendors and things like that. Right? Like, so that's another example of online rumors leading to offline consequences. So as we've seen, political and religious divides can intensify the spread of misinformation in India. But when talking about the problem of so-called fake news in India, you cannot leave out WhatsApp. It is seen by many experts as a major tool in the war of disinformation in the country. With nearly 500 million users, India is the leading country in terms of audience size. Owned by the US tech giant Meta, it deals with small social circles of people. One knows which makes the platform more private and personal, and therefore also more trustworthy than other social media platforms. And the unique character of end-to-end -end encryption makes it almost impossible to trace the source of misinformation. 
For tens of millions of Indian users, WhatsApp has become a replacement for the internet. There's this very close connection with what information you get through WhatsApp, so you're more susceptible to, you know, if you receive misinformation from your family or your fr close friends, you're more likely to believe in that. In some cases, rumors spread why WhatsApp have real-world consequences. In July 2018, five people belonging to a nomadic community were lynched in the western state of Maharashtra. Rumors began circulating on WhatsApp groups about a kidnapping gang active in the area. Similar cases were reported from other parts in the country. To slow down the spread of fake news, WhatsApp added a feature in India that limited forwarding messages to a maximum of five chats in August 2018. Later, this feature was rolled out in other countries as well. But experts think that this step does not hinder the spread of mis- and disinformation that much. So in our work that if you are a uh, invested uh, uh, like uh, actor, right, like as a or like a political party who wants to spread some propaganda, you have the resources, you have the manpower to do this, so you can really just you know forward it to one person at a time, get this viral, right? Like so, that's not a clear solution that works. So what could the solution be? Facebook and Twitter have developed artificial intelligence tools to identify misinformation, but what could be done when it comes to untraceable sources like in WhatsApp? I think pla platforms have to be have to constantly work with uh, civil society, with journalists, uh, with fact checkers, organizations like ours, to see how you can we can use technology without uh, you know without obviously in, in infringing on people's rights, individual liberties, to control the spread of or to slow it down. All experts interviewed by DW agree that the solution lies in the digital literacy of the individual, as well as pressuring companies like Meta and Twitter to include user-friendly tools for fact-checking. So what can you do? Remember, do not share unverified messages. And be extra careful when it comes to WhatsApp. You can easily see if a message has been forwarded once or multiple times. If you see misinformation on public platforms, do not hesitate to report them. And you can also send them to our team at factcheckingatdw.com or in the comments.